Hello, New Testament Christian Church. Thank you for being with us today. Uh, would you go to the Lord with me in prayer as we get ready to get into his word as he enriches our lives through the things that he would want us to know? Let's pray together. Father, thank you for being so faithful. We praise you for being a God who shares your insights with us through the written word. Uh, Lord, we know your Holy Spirit guides us. But then we also have your word that you inspire to help us live the life that you called us to live. When we seem to be struggling from time to time, finding opportunities to uh, be more faithful is what we need. So we praise you, God, for uh, this time in your word as we look at uh, Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. We praise you for the encouragement we find in it that we can live and find ways to overcome the things that may draw us down and even draw those around us down. So we praise you for that. We ask, Lord, today as we look at nobility that you'll help us to be uh, better at who we are uh, as we try to find ways to serve you. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, as I already mentioned in my prayer, we, we started a series of messages last week entitled, What You Thinking? Along the way, last week, we talked about things that are true. As we understand what Paul was writing, uh, he's telling us that he wants to start with truth. Everything must be started uh, with truth, things that are true, because if not, the whole foundation will crumble eventually. Maybe you've uh, been guilty, as I have, at some point in time in your life where you told something that wasn't exactly true. Maybe you'd call it a little white lie. Maybe you'd call it a bold, a bold face lie. And what happens is if you tell something that's not true, once you tell it, you've got to remember what you told because the next time, if it were to come out, uh, then it may not come out the same. Now we've got an issue. And it seems to be much easier to start with the truth than it is to try to cover up something along the way. We only do that because we're trying to maybe protect ourselves or think that it's better on us, but it's not. So Paul says, as we were looking at this passage, he told us last week to think about whatever was true. Well, this week we talk about things that are noble. As I mentioned, this is the second in a series of messages based on the writings uh, of Paul to the church at Philippi. And so as we come to the latter part of this letter, he is leaving the church with some final encouraging words. We often do the same thing. Uh, we try to encourage those we love and care about to do everything they can to take care of themselves and, and to live an upstanding life. Maybe you're like me when I was younger and still hear people say it uh, of an aging generation They'll say things like, don't take any wooden nickels. Now, what does that mean? I've never seen a wooden nickel in my life, but I used to hear that all the time and still do from time to time. What people are really trying to do is simply tell us that to be watchful and to look out for yourself. Protect yourself from being harmed or deceived in any way. We may say something like, if, if you need anything, don't hesitate to call me. We're, we're letting people know that that they are valuable to us, and, and we want them to understand that we would drop e any and everything to come and lend them aid if that's what they needed. Well, so Paul says here, finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent and praiseworthy, think about such things. So last week, as we began this series, we talked about the things that were true. Uh, we understand that if we start with truth, as we've already mentioned, the foundation will be sure we can build upon it. So we learned last week that Jesus is true. We talked about how he went to prepare a place for us, as he shared with us in John chapter 14. And he prepared a place that we could be with him. We understand that to be heaven. Heaven is true. And we could understand that not only is Jesus true and heaven true, we find out that the very core, the foundation of that is uh, true because God's love for us is true. He sent his son into this world to die for us so that we could spend eternity with him in heaven. That is some wonderful news. 
That's encouraging news. That's the news we should be sharing with other people. As, even as Paul is sharing in Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, as he's winding down his letter to the church of Philippi, how they could be encouraged by the things that they've already been taught and learned and experienced in light of who Christ is. And so this week, we're thinking on and fa- focusing on things that are noble. Noble simply means having or sharing fine personal qualities or high moral principles and ideas. Some things that would be similar to that in thought would be righteous, virtuous, good, honorable, honest, upright, upstanding, decent, worthy, uncorrupt, moral, ethical, reputable, unselfish, generous, self-sacrificing, brave, lofty, exalted, elevated. Well, Think about the political climate we find ourselves in today. Uh, may not be a much, so much nobility going on in the ads that you're seeing bombarding your TV screen or radio or Internet, whatever you do to get your uh, social media fix. Uh, we seem to be bombarded with things, and not all of those are true, and they're not always noble. So what are some things that we can think of as being noble? Well, I can think of no other thing uh, right to start with than maybe sharing in the suffering of others. That is a noble and commendable thing that we could do. Psalmist said in Psalm 41, verse 1, Blessed is he who has regard for the weak. The Lord delivers him in times of trouble. Now, we find ourselves uh, going through times of weakness and trouble. All of us have at some point in time in our life. And if we do find ourselves going through uh, suffering of some sorts, well, we'd hope somebody would be there for us. A dear sister in Christ right now uh, is going through a difficult time with her health. Uh, some weeks ago, she was having some pressure in her chest, and it, she'd been experiencing it for quite some time, and so she decided to finally go to the doctor, and she found herself at the ER, and while she was there, they determined she had fluid around her heart. Well, Subsequent testing and scans revealed that uh, the cause of the fluid was not so much heart-related, but it was as a result of a tumor that they had located between her lungs. Little did she know that that trip to find out what was causing this discomfort would be life-changing for her. And now she's receiving treatment, and, and one of the things that she's confessed is that's helping her to get through and cope with such a life-changing diagnosis is the outpouring of love and support that she receives from from family and friends and brothers and sisters in Christ. They're praying. They're sending her cards of encouragement. They send flowers. And and when she's asked, some have even offered advice on and what's helped them to deal with the side effects of the chemotherapy that she's now having to endure and, and praise the Lord, got a report just today that the doctor said that, that the tumor, even after a first series of treatments, has already begun to shrink. And we, would you pray for her? Her name is Kim. Lift her up. Just say, God, continue to shrink this tumor. Remove it, God. Uh, we know that you can do that. Just this week, another instance of how we can share in the sufferings of others. We, we laid to rest one of our most senior members of our New Testament Christian Church family. Her name was Miss Lily. And, and just like with all the others that we've lost along the way, the church stops and they pray during time of sickness and weakness. And, 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 and they also offer encouragement to their family. And they send flowers and offer, you know, words of encouragement through cards. Uh, they call to check on people. They stop by, bring food. And, and, and they don't have to go and do that, but they do that so that people know that they're not going through this difficult time of suffering all alone. Well, here's another example. If we want to think about how we can share in the suffering of others, this is not as severe as cancer treatment or even the loss of a dear loved one. This week marks the start of our school year here in our area, Roanoke Rapids. Now, due to the ongoing threat of COVID-19, our local school board and the administration uh, decided that our children would be going virtually for the first six weeks. 
That, that announcement was made only about a week or a little better before school was to start. So many parents found themselves having to adjust personal schedules to accommodate work and caring for their family and now adding educating their children within their home. And, and, and so I'm sure there have been many challenges to it. Don't get me wrong. I mean, virtual learning always has its challenges. If you've ever done it or taken a class online, if you were in college, I mean, computers not functioning properly, internet outages either on your end or on the other end, and servers not functioning, or children maybe not being able to sign in. To, they've got an incorrect password uh, that's been inputted into their device that they're using. But they're all challenges that can be overcome. But I am thankful for people within our congregation who have felt the struggle that these parents were dealing with, and they volunteered to help families that were either, first of all, single parents uh, who worked outside of the home and, and needed or someone to help with their kids uh, to instruct them and help them get through school so that, uh, you know, the parent doesn't have to stop working or take leaves of absences. And so it, or they could be uh, a child that has both parents at home, but they must work outside of the home. And, and so these people within our congregation, they're coming alongside these families by helping the children get their lessons done, logging into their computers, make sure they're interacting with their teacher virtually. They're providing a safe environment uh, and, you know, for them to be in and, and having activities. And, and I love to be able to hear about the Bible lessons that are going on here, right here in our own church facility. Now, in essence, what these people are doing is they're loving these children just as they're wrong. And, and they're doing everything they can to show these families that, that God cares and loves, loves them. You see, a lot of planning uh, goes into something like Even though it was put together on short notice, there was meeting with elders, there was legal things that had to be addressed. Uh, you know, there was altering personal schedules on behalf of times of the volunteers, uh, you know, Things had to be done all in a short period. But the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 32, verse 8, but the, but the noble man makes noble plans, and by noble deeds he stands. And, and we stand on our tallest when, when we stand with those who are struggling in some way. Well, here's another noble thing we could be thinking about, as Paul told us, whatever is noble to be thinking how about partnering and proclaiming the gospel? Paul says in Philippians chapter 1, verses 3 through 6, I thank my God every time I remember you. In, in all of my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because you are uh, of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. Being confident of this, that he who has begun a good work in you will carry it on to the completion until the day of Christ's return. There is no greater or noble task than sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ with someone. As, as you've heard me say, and people within our congregation even say, that, that, that on any number of occasions that the dividends are eternal. They're not short term. They're not temporary. As nice as it is to find someone that we can help with temporary needs, maybe it's meals, uh, offering a cold drink to someone, even offering clothing or a night's lodging, they only alleviate a temporary need. And that need's going to come back. It, it can't compare to what the good news of salvation can do for a person's soul for eternity. Just last week, I, I witnessed one of our elders walking around with a young person explaining the plan of salvation. Uh, he walked her to the cross uh, that we have at the front of our sanctuary, and, and he talked about the meaning of Jesus' sacrifice for our sins. He took her to the baptistry that you see behind me, and, and, and he explained why that we, we're buried with Christ in baptism, and we can rise to newness of life as a new creation because God has washed away all of our sins, and, and he gives us his Holy Spirit. And friend, if you've never shared the hope that you have with Jesus, well, what's stopping you? Scripture says in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15, But in your hearts set apart Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who answers you, to uh, ask you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. 
Friend, if you have set Jesus apart as your Lord in your life, then you should always be prepared to give an answer for the hope that you have in him. I do. Now, early on in my Christian walk, I can tell you, I wasn't always the most evangelical in my approach to talking with people. But it's gotten easier over the years. Obviously, I'm standing before you today sharing a gospel message. But everyone has been called to share the reason for the hope that we have in Christ. You can do it in a number of ways. You can do it in just a daily conversation with someone when you just give God glory and credit for the things that he's doing in your life through the blessings he's placed in your life. You can do it as you offer to pray for someone who's going through a difficult time as you come alongside to uh, share in the struggles of those around you. But friends, I also want you to understand that finally probably the noblest thing that anyone can do is by accepting Jesus as Lord. I mean, if you have not done that, that is the most noble thing that you can do right now. It is get yourself right with Jesus. Here I am, God. Because he's the only one that's going to make you moral and ethical and righteous and, and, and just and worthy is some of those uh, words that we were using to describe nobility. Remember, one of the attributes of nobility is being unselfish. I, I want you to hear me today. And, and I want to say this as lovingly as I can, but for many people, the reason they haven't accepted Jesus yet as their personal Lord and Savior is they're selfish. I, I, now, don't turn me off. Don't get me wrong. Listen to what I'm going to say. Let me explain what I'm saying. Many don't follow Jesus because he calls us to be different, not stay the way we are. And for a lot of us, we don't know how to change. And so as a result, we'd rather stay the way we are than make a change and go into something that's so uncertain that I would have no clue as to what the other side is going to look like. But let me tell you, it is so much greater than what you're living in right now if you don't have a relationship with Jesus. He calls us to let him lead our lives. He will require change. There's no way around that. And, and, and far too many people, well, they don't want that change. It's too uncomfortable and even unacceptable. Too many people don't understand Jesus made some drastic changes in himself to come to where we are to demonstrate his love for us. Here's what Paul would write in Philippians chapter 2, verses 6 through 8. Speaking of Jesus, he says, Who, being in the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped. Listen to these next words. But made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in the appearance of a man. He humbled himself. And became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Friend, friend, if you think following Jesus would require too much change for your life, you think again. He pursued you, and, and, and as a result, he made a lot of changes in who he was to get to you. And his pursuit of you requires far more changes and sacrifice on his part than it does on your part. And so now, friend, I want you to consider something else. And that is, if you haven't already accepted Jesus, if you haven't already made him your Lord, there will be a day where all of us will confess him as Lord. Paul would continue in Philippians chapter 2, verses 9 through 11. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him a name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under earth. And every tongue confessed that Jesus Christ is the Lord to the glory of God the Father. Now, the sad thing is, for some, it's going to be too late. But today, God has given each one of us opportunity to confess him as our Lord. I had to do it today. God, you're my God. You're my Lord through Jesus. And let me honor you in the things that I say and do and the way I treat people and as these young people come through our building and our facility this week, let me love them the way that you love me and let them see you in me. And may he see you in those who are serving them. I can tell you, 
that my life is so much more, more rewarding now after accepting Jesus over 24 years ago. I, I believe my family, if I had them standing here, would probably testify to you that probably the noblest thing I could have ever done was accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Uh, they've been blessed, I'm sure, I would hope, and probably I, I fail daily. But I know that they had to be more blessed by the Lord's leading in my life than if I had not accepted him. Because all of us tend to be selfish, remember? I, I find great joy in serving the Lord by putting them first above me. Uh, I've been blessed to serve wonderful people that God has placed in my life through the congregations that I, I've been blessed to serve now in my ministry. And, and my commitment to follow Jesus has never been stronger. My life is so much richer and fuller as a result of my relationship with Jesus, not in place of Jesus. And, and I shudder to think what my life would have been without him now. Thinking back on the part of my life where nearly half of it has been fully in Christ and the first half not. I can see a difference, but it's often on this side that we really get to see the fullness. And I have to be honest, I think I could tend to make a mess of things without him. Even today, I'm, I'm sure, if I, if I chose to make decisions solely based on what Daniel wants, I could make a mess of life. I talk to a lot of people every day that say that their lives are a mess. Relationships that they have, a mess. Families, in a mess. Preacher, I don't understand why my children are doing this or why my wife's doing that or... Their finances are in a mess. Their career is a mess. But it doesn't have to be that way. Friend, friend if you don't wait and make that choice, life gets better. You don't have to wait till it's too late. Make, make the decision today to give your life to Jesus and watch how he takes our mess and turns it into something beautiful. I believe it was Jeff Walling who said, our lives are messy. That's why we need a Messiah. God is calling you today. He says, no matter the mess you're in, I can fix it. He tells us through the prophet Isaiah, in Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18. Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red as crimson, they shall be like wool. Now trust him. Allow him to wash you clean. Surrender to him today. Make the choice that you're going to be baptized into Christ if that's not ever been what you've done at this point. If trust him, first of all, that he's going to be Lord and God. Here I am, Jesus. Accept me for, for, for being one of your children. I want to be wholly yours. I confess that you are Lord. You are God. You will be in charge. I'm repenting of the things in my life that have not been pleasing to you. I'm trusting right now that you're going to make those, though they have stained my life, as white as snow and pure as wool. Surrender to him in Christian baptism. Galatians chapter 3, verses 26 and 27 says, you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. Let me ask, would you make this most noble decision today? Would you clothe yourself with Jesus? Would you surrender your life to him? He's asking you to do that. Oh, friend, there's the noble things that we could think about is coming alongside people when they're going through a difficult time and their periods of suffering. Sharing the gospel with Jesus. If you're already a follower of Jesus, share Jesus. But if you haven't, the most noble thing you can do is surrender to Jesus. Let's be praying. Father, thank you for your faithfulness. We praise you for your love. Thank you for Jesus that he sets us apart. He cleanses us, the Bible says. We make a mess, he cleans us. We destroy life, he restores it. 
we tear down things around us, he can make new creations. That's what the Bible imagery gives us of us who come to Jesus. And I pray, Lord, for those who may be making the decision today. They receive the fullness of the Holy Spirit leading and living in their life as they surrender to you right now. We pray, Father, that you bless us to be faithful and honorable servants of yours. May we find ways of thinking about things that are more noble and serving in that capacity. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen.